Some of you might think that leading worship from the keyboard is a lost art. And admittedly, we don't really see it done as often as maybe it used to be done. Most of the time, if a worship leader has the choice between and the skills to choose between piano and guitar, they're going to lead from guitar. But why is that? And maybe sometimes you actually really need the keyboard to be a part of your band, but you also need to be the one leading the songs. Well, I think that there's ways to do this well. And if it's something that you'd like to do, but you're not very comfortable doing, I'm gonna give you some great advice, not just from me, but from real seasoned professionals who are excellent at leading worship from the keyboard. So in today's video, I'm really excited. We've got a couple interviews that I've done with Jared Anderson and Seth Putnam that I think are really gonna give you some practical tips and some great philosophical advice about how you can approach leading worship and playing keyboard at the same time. Let me introduce you to Jared Anderson. Jared is an incredibly talented songwriter and recording artist, author of popular worship songs like Great I Am, Rescue, and Amazed. I first had the opportunity to meet Jared a decade ago during my time in Colorado Springs at the New Life School of Worship, where Jared was a lecturer. Back then, I remember he judged songs in the songwriting class. These days, Jared leads worship at a church in Colorado Springs, and he's a master at leading worship well from the keyboard. Hey, Jared, how are you? Doing great, man. Good to be with you. Yeah, thanks for being with us. So like we talked about via text and email, we're doing this video talking about how to lead worship from the keyboard. Um, mm -hmm. And that's something that I've seen you do a lot of, and I think you do a really great job of. So before thanks. we dive into how you like to approach that, could you just share a little bit about your story of how mm -hmm. you started leading worship, how you started playing keys, a little bit of your background and what you're up to now? Yeah. I started piano lessons at eight years old, and then I got into junior high, and our youth pastor was also the worship pastor and also taught piano lessons. Okay. Busy guy. Uh, his name is Chris Hodges. He's the pastor of Church of the Highlands in Alabama, just yeah. like the largest church in America now. But back in the day, um, he was my piano teacher, and really, we would spend half the time on classical written note work and half the time like learning how to play by ear my my parents every saturday night would go to the church and they put it and they, i would be at the piano and they would walk around and pray and i would just play and sing my guts out of of the songs i was learning and it was terrible um <laughs> but uh, it's how you it's how you learn you know from there i started playing keys in the youth band with a guy that knew what he was doing um and singing backups during this last year of COVID, we've had so many people reach out to us with smaller bands than normal who are who might normally not need to cover a lot of instrumental ground, but are now feeling like, you know, I've only got a four piece band this week. I really mm -hmm. want to make sure we still sound full. And I, I've seen you play with small bands where you might just have bass, drums, guitar and yourself on piano. Yeah. How do you approach managing the pastoral responsibility to lead the congregation and mm -hmm. also contribute to the band? What are some things that have helped you to really strike that balance well? So, um, I, I kind of, the whole biblical reference of, of when Jacob takes his family um, back to his, you know, father's land, he it has this thing of he's, he, he moves at the pace of the sheep, right? Mm -hmm. He moves at the pace of the children. And so I'm in a church right now that's much smaller. There's maybe 300 members. And the first thing I did, <laughs> did when I got here was I took down the drum cage. Um, Probably raised some eyebrows right then. I know, bro. I know. <laughs> I, I did. I, I'll, I'll warn you. I'm not, I'm not, um, my ideas are not necessarily mainstream. So take it. You know, the pastor may hate my ideas and you may be like, well, Jared said so. And he'd be like, well, I don't care. So you should probably follow your pastor, not me at that point. But I got rid of the kick drum. I got a kick pedal that hits a cajon that we just, and here's the thing is like, I, I reclaimed the drummer for the band. Hmm. I don't want the drummer away from the band in his own world for the sake of fullness we've we've destroyed proximity right mm. so we're we're essentially next to one another by ourselves 
and that's kind of modern life in many ways like it's also happening on the stage so i'm trying to reclaim the drummer and i also also they just were not ready for click Mm. just not ready for it and i'm like i so right now i started a choir and i have my vocal teacher coming in because every instrument was made to emulate the voice and the voice is the only instrument made by god Hmm. so i'm on this mission and i've been at it for six months and we could check in with me in five years and see if i'm doing any better (laughs) but i'm on this mission to reclaim the voices Hmm. and if i'm going to reclaim the voices and the drummer's too loud in their ear they're not going to sing right so so i've i've made the voice the sacrament of the music (laughs) yeah okay right that's what like the centerpiece so the voice is now the centerpiece everything else is in the periphery um the voice typically in a song is not the first thing you hear in music rhythm is the first thing you hear in music right um but the voice is the chief expression and that's where um I, I feel we've gotten off because we've made it so much about the rhythm that mm. we've lost the voice and the rhythm was meant to support it, not overpower it. So if somebody finds themselves choosing between playing the right keys parts sure. or leading with vocal intention and with, with, with precision and excellence, right. just, you know what, forget the keys lick, sing yeah. the vocal, lead and vocally. We s- we so have to, we have to keep pulling even tech, even our, because you know, this is, we're, as worship leaders, we're in middle management. You know, who's feeling it even more is our tech team, right? Wow. Yeah. Our tech team is trying to support us while we try to support leadership, right? So we're leading on both ends. So if we're stressed, we're totally handing it off. Right. Right. To all our, all of our support needs, feel it even if they're on the other side of the camera, it's life sucking when Mm. we're drained and leading out of fear every time. So this centering of the heart and guys, like how do we submit all of this work to Jesus? This is not our work. This is not my breath. This is his. My body is a temple, all this gear, all this stuff. Let's do this as worship. It's just a different posture. Mm. But but rarely will leadership come and do that for us. Right? And I'll like, yeah, like just turn it in. Get it done. Right? But we've got to lead from that posture. And then it gives us new eyes and everybody fresh eyes for what we're doing. Right? Yeah. I'm not saying it gets trashy or it gets sloppy it just gets authentic by its nature when it's done from the heart it i I tell my kids whatever you wear with confidence automatically becomes cool it's here first it's not an exterior thing Mm. right so that's good that's what i got (laughs) that's a challenge that's so good it's 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 worth (laughs) the effort it's worth the time Mm-hmm. the freedom that you can feel when you're leading from that place is its own reward, right? I mean, the absolutely the shift in the way you treat and view yourself and what you're contributing and what you're not. Right. What, what God is making up for and what he's not, right? Yeah. That's, man, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for oh, sharing dude. your ideas and your experience. That went in so many cool directions. I really appreciate Mm. your time. Likewise, man. Thanks, man. What a joy. This is Seth Putnam. Seth is a worship pastor at New Life Church in Colorado Springs, home of New Life Worship. I first got connected with Seth a couple years back through our Sunday Keys user community on Facebook, and we connected further once I realized he was a worship leader at New Life. Seth regularly leads worship from Keys, and over the last year, I've loved seeing him lead via live stream. Seth has given our team some great insight into how he uses Sunday Keys and approaches preparing for leading worship and playing Keys at the same time. So I knew I wanted to let him speak to this topic further 
in this video. Hey Seth, how you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing great, David. Thanks for having me on. For sure. I'm excited about you participating in this video. So we're talking about how you can approach leading worship from keys. So as we start talking about this topic, could you share just a little bit about your experience with doing that and where you're doing that right now? Sure. So currently I'm one of the worship pastors at New Life Church in Colorado Springs, and my primary focus is the Friday night congregation. That's primarily where I lead, but I think as most of your viewers would know, it's COVID uh, season, so it's all hands on deck. So we're kind of all over the place, but Friday night is particularly where I lead worship and play keyboards. Okay, awesome. So have you always led worship from keys? That is a good question. No, I've, I've led, oh, I grew up as a PK, so I grew up in a very small, charismatic, non-denominational church, and so... I just learned how to worship on whatever was available. Uh, my <laughs> father's a piano player, so he's the one that really instructed and instilled into me the beauty of singing and playing while leading. Okay, okay. So before we hit record here, we were just kind of catching up. We've known each other for a little while here and there. And um, you and I were both kind of laughing at how few people we really see doing this anymore, leading from the keyboard. Um, did you have any idea why do you think that we see so many more people with a guitar in hand leading the congregation without a second thought? And then people maybe hesitate a little bit more to do the same thing with a piano in front of them. It's because uh, guitar players are pretty soft, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I just definitely offended half, if not more, of your of your audience. No. No, you're right, David. Um, I think one of the one of the reasons why leading from keys is very difficult, especially in our modern age of contemporary or modern worship, is because a lot of songs are synth driven, and there is that pressure to feel like you have to play all of the lines and you have to play them flawlessly, and every sound that you play has to sound like the recording. So I think there is kind of like this if we want to quote dying art of literally just leading from the piano, maybe even boot doing piano and pad and leading a song. In today's modern worship, it does feel a little bit different, but I think we can get back into leading and um, like leading from piano and pad and leading the song effectively, even in modern worship. So when you're planning out a set list and you know you're going to be both playing piano and leading songs, how do you start to frame that as you figure out, how am I going to approach this? How am I going to wear both of these hats well? Yeah, that's great. So my approach might be different than most people's approach, but my approach first and foremost is I want to do songs that set the tone of the service right. And so when I find those songs, then I also have to filter, does the energy, does the sounds match the tone as well of the service? And so I'll be thinking about that. Now for me, for the most part, I just use one specific patch. It's a, well, a Frankenstein patch, if I can still call it that. <laughs> I don't call it that, to be honest. I call it the New Life Worship Universal Patch. I've, um, because Sunday Sounds, and thank you, David, for all your hard work of dialing in all the sounds, you've also created a template for us to cr customize and create our own sounds. And so that's exactly what I did. I needed to create something that works specifically for me. So I just focus more on the kind of grand piano and a couple of pads. I even have like an upright piano and a, a Wurlitzer and a few other special effects in there that I use. But I'll, I'll just stay on one patch and I'll know that patch really well. Yeah. So that, uh, that, that's pretty much my philosophy when it comes to, and my approach when it comes to planning out a worship set. I'll think about the tone, I'll think about you know, um, the, the sound of the song. And then I'll think about how does my patch fit in with all of that? Yeah, so you're kind of giving yourself one less thing to think about by giving yourself a, a sandbox to play within. Yeah, that's correct. Because uh, here's something that I've noticed. It's easy to disconnect musically when you're playing the acoustic guitar and you have to then encourage the congregation if you want to be spontaneous, if you want to share a scripture, or if you want to go somewhere that you hadn't really planned. It's really easy just to stop playing, let the band take over, and you focus on the message. But it's really hard to disconnect musically and still connect in ministerially if you're playing the keyboards. Um, 
Yeah, I think that's really hard because as keyboard players, we are in charge of those tender moments. We are also in charge of the transitions a lot of times and even the complicated musical themes. We sometimes have to play that. So there is this juxtaposition of having to be really technical and at the same time wanting to speak in a way and encourage in a way that makes sense. Yeah. So how do you give yourself the flexibility to still be the glue from a musical standpoint while also being able to sort of check out to a certain extent when you really need to pay attention to how the room is responding to where the song might need to go from a spiritual standpoint? How do you ride that balance between holding everything together musically, as the keys most often do, and holding the bigger environment, the bigger ministry moment opportunities together? That's a great question. I don't know if I do this well, <laughs> but I think what's what's really worked well for me is the preparation side of things. I really do feel like if the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit, He'll not only prepare you for the journey, but when you're in the journey, He'll also give you maybe some updates, if we want to call it that way. Yeah. But I also think, but I really do think it starts in your planning stages and just asking the Lord to prepare your heart about where He wants to go. And then in those moments of preparation, beginning to practice out, well, what would an extended time of worship look like if I were to say something over this, this chord progression? Or what if we didn't end the song, cut it off? What if we let it flow a little bit? What would it feel like and sound like if I were to play and say something? And so I, I will begin to practice those things out. That's good. I love that taking the time to sort of prepare, even the moments where you're not sure what's going to happen, just helps you to sort of be able to disconnect a little bit musically because that's sort of become routine behind the scenes. So one more question, Seth, if, if you were to speak directly to somebody who is either leading from keys, but looking to grow in confidence, or maybe somebody who knows how to play keys, knows how to lead, and is looking to put those two actions together for the first time, what would you say to somebody who's just starting out, but really wants to pursue leading worship from keys well? I would say find a safe place to practice. Um, I don't necessarily think that your first Sunday of playing and singing at the same time, I don't think that maybe your church platform, your Sunday service is the best place to do it. So mm. find a safe place, maybe with your own worship team, maybe start it off in rehearsals if you can do that. Yeah. And if you can't do that, then yeah, just have some friends over, but make it, you know, make it a worshipful event. Don't just do it just to practice it. Like actually make it a, a spiritual journey as well as a technical journey. So that, that, that would be my first encouragement is, is to um, feel it out, maybe outside of a Sunday. And in, until it starts feeling natural, then I would say start to incorporate that. And that's another good uh, piece of advice too, is if you feel like you want to sing and play and it's kind of your first time, well, if it's your first time on a Sunday service, don't do it for every song. Maybe just do it for one song, maybe the, the offering song or maybe the communion moment or altar ministry moment at the end. Just save it for one moment and build some reps and you'll, you'll see a difference. Okay. Give yourself some time to build up those muscles. Seth, awesome. man, thanks for your time. Thanks for your insight. Really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, thanks for having me, David. Okay, guys, so I hope that these interviews were insightful to you. I want to say a huge thanks to Jared Anderson and to Seth Putnam both for giving of their time to shoot these interviews and be a part of this video. I am really appreciative and have great respect for both of those guys. We'll put links in the description to Jared Anderson. You can check out his music and to the music of New Life Worship, uh, where Seth is a part of the team. Some amazing worship resources and worship songs uh, coming out of these places that you should absolutely check out if you haven't already heard of them. Now, if you are a worship leader who's thinking about leading from keys, or maybe this is something that you already do, please leave a comment and let us know how this video hit you. Was it challenging? Was it affirming? Lastly, if you'd like to support us, you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, maybe share it with a worship leader that you know. I'm David from Sunday Sounds. We've got all the Worship Keys resources you need on our website. There's a link in the description to some free resources that we've prepared for you. So I hope you'll check those out. Thanks for watching the video. Have a great day.